So I'm going to walk you through the marketing funnel and kind of compare what a brand like Audi or a brand like BMW would do uh, compared to how this would work for you as a recruiter. Um, so at Shazam, uh, just to give you a little more background, at Shazam we were working with major brands like BMW, Lufthansa, Porsche to do augmented reality campaigns, another marketing buzzword. Um, and then there's some of the Shazam technology that we actually use for recruiting campaigns, which I will share with you. Um, and then uh, we can, if you have any questions afterwards, just let me know. So to start, we have understanding the marketing funnel. So the first thing is awareness. So are people aware that your company even exists? Do they know you as, a, as, an, as, as you know, your, what's your employer branding? Do they, know, do they know your company? What's their opinion of your company? So this is where, I'll show you some examples later, but this is where you as working with your marketing team should be putting it out there, how cool you are to work for, how cool you are as a brand. Then we have interest. So this is the second stage in the funnel. Interest is, okay, I'm now interested. I'm actually going to visit your website, maybe request some more information. Uh, em and I had a nice conversation about this. I think she'll probably talk more about it, um, about just like, you know, making sure your website has the right kind of sexiness to it so people want to get more information from you. Then evaluation. So evaluation, for me personally, this is the most tricky one because evaluation is where people are trying to figure out that you're not shady. They're trying to figure out, like, is what they're saying, when I asked for interest, when they sent me this information, is it, is it legit? Are they credible? So this is, this is the next step. Then the fourth is trial. So this is like the technical term, like if I was selling like toothpaste, it would be somebody would try my product. Uh, if I was selling cars, someone would come in for a test drive. In your case, somebody would actually apply for a job. So this is the, the position where somebody actually says, yes, I want this job, I'm going to now apply for it. And then we have adoption. Uh, so this is the end of the marketing funnel. Um, and for you guys, this would probably be a successful candidate acquisition. Somebody has now decided to become an employer. So this is basically the marketing funnel. Um, and I think that for you guys, if you just look at the candidate as kind of a customer, because I think that this is something that if you looked at it this way, you can walk a candidate through this entire funnel. Do you think that when Coca-Cola is advertising and you see a Coke ad, they expect someone to run straight to the store and buy a Coke? No, the way it works is the next time I'm thirsty, I think of Coke. So you have to actually wait for them to get into their process so that the next time they say, hey, we need to update our new set, let's call this guy. So it's more about like making people know that you even exist and whenever they have the problem, know that you have the solution. So this is really where this brand marketing comes into play. So, I mean, so that's the kind of feeling that it drives, right? So it's making you feel something. It's making you feel positive about the brand. I'm not going to go buy an Audi right now, but I know that the next time I buy a car, I'll buy an Audi. I actually ended up buying an Audi uh, and moving to Berlin. So this, this commercial worked on me. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the concept behind branding. It's about making people f have a feeling about you. And so your employer branding should have, people should have this kind of positive feeling about you. So now we have branding. And a part of branding is content marketing. Um, and I'm showing you guys this because this is a campaign we actually did, we worked on for Shazam. So you see this is actually uh, a, a series that the German army has created where they, where they follow different groups of soldiers around um, and just follow them through their day. And it's available on YouTube, through podcasts, and you can also sign up for WhatsApp. So this is a way that they're actually creating a, a, a recruiting database of people who are following their content. Um, and of course, they're using an app like Shazam to drive traffic to this and drive awareness of this. So Shazam is really just an awareness driver to get people to join. Um, and they use an app like Shazam because Shazam is their right target demographic. So most 65% uh, of Shazam's users were 18 to 34. Um, so this is, this is where, they, where, where they thought, okay, this is our right target demographic. 18 to 34, interested in music, interested in new things. And this teaser generated 2.5 million, 2.4 million YouTube views. They currently have their own channel where they're producing this content. This, this, this channel has 350,000 uh, subscribers in Germany. So that's, like, that's a pretty big recruiting database for them because I don't think Germans even allowed to have that many people in their army, are they? Anyway, sorry. Uh, so, this, so this is, 
another example of how you can use content marketing. This doesn't really cost them a lot because this isn't TV. You know, this is their own channels that they're using existing platforms, YouTube, Facebook even, uh, to, to kind of communicate. This is uh, another campaign we worked on at Shazam. Very interesting. Um, this is actually guerrilla marketing. Uh, and this is really hardcore guerrilla marketing. This campaign created a bit of, of a buzz in, in Berlin last year. Um, I didn't take these photos, but these are both by my house. This is a very, this is a Danish uh, brew pub, and they serve only Danish beers, and it's horrible. It's just horrible. Uh, so so this, this, you see, is take the exit. That's all you see. You don't see any employer branding. You don't know who this is. You don't know what this is about. You have to, like, search it up. Um, so this campaign was actually done by Metro Group, the big cash and carry, uh, big box retailer um, in Germany. Um, they have a, uh, the digital transformation team there. So this is the team that's uh, coming up with new software, helping them do the, in German you say, digitalisierung, uh, for, for getting them into the next century um, and, and advancing their business. So you see here, the reason why this caused such a, such a scene was here it says, Joel works in a software firm. He gets 5% equity. The company is worth zero. What are Joel's shares worth? <laughs> so this, was, this is actually at a, at a, a S-Bahn station, so an overground station in Berlin. Um, and we worked on this because, because they're doing digital transformation. They wanted to have something cool and digital. So you see there's a Shazam code. In the Shazam app, you can open it, scan this code, and then it takes you to show you what this take the exit is all about. So this campaign actually generated 4,000 uh, signups for them. So this generated 4,000 candidate leads for them within Berlin. But because the entire campaign was around trashing the Berlin startup scene, every newsletter, every blog, everybody in Berlin kind of was up in arms. Uh, the CEO of Metro Group, uh, AG, had to actually apologize to the, uh, to the, to the association of uh, German startups. Um, so it created a big buzz. Everybody was against it, but uh, the guys at Metro Gnome, which is the name of this group within Metro, said, oh, it's a huge success. We have more, we, we accomplished what it was trying to do for us. Everybody now knows who we are. We got, we got the leads we wanted. Who cares if, you know, Berlin startups are pissed at us? So that, that's, that's all they cared about. So, so this is a, cam a campaign we worked on. But the digital aspect here, so you have this guerrilla aspect of you've got this secret message, and then you have the digital aspect. Because with all of these campaigns, like outside of Audi, what they're really trying to get, so with, with uh, the German army, you have them having a digital aspect so they can immediately get the customer from their message to a sign-up. Like just in two clicks, you're, you're now signed up for more information. Here, through one scan and a click, you're now getting more, you're getting closer to a, a actually getting someone further down the funnel. So back to closing the funnel. Uh, so we have the branding we talked about. And then in the middle, we have CMR leads. So branding creates the interest in you and your company. We talked about that. So the CMR leads is closing that funnel. So this is with, you know, the German army has this, this video content, but they really want you to eventually come through to their website, learn more about their programs, and sign up. So this is where you can really generate leads. So you can almost look at this content that the, that the German army has created as a, as a CMR, CRM tool. Um, and so in everything that we do in terms of marketing, it's all about going back to people. So in, in digital advertising, there's this retargeting. If you ever go to like a, a, a hotel website, and then th three clicks later, you're seeing ads again from that same hotel. So that's just retargeting. So that's actually them trying to now convert you further down this, this marketing funnel. Um, so this is where you really need to maintain this. The thing that we're seeing more and more is the use of technology. So for example, because I have left Shazam and I'm on the market, everyone is coming to me and saying, you know, I'm getting recruited a lot. But I'm getting recruited for jobs that don't really fit me because the recruiters calling me, they don't have a database. They just say, oh, this guy was MD of this tech company, so he should fit this tech company. And it's like I was getting recruited to work for a company that makes headphones because they're both music, right? Shazam and headphones are music. I have no idea how like you would manufacture headphones, so how's that going to work? 
So if they had a better CRM database, they would be able to match me better to the job so that they're not wasting their own time calling me about the job. But then once you build up a database using technology, so for example, with the example of Nava, the app here in London, they're, they're using uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms to actually match people to venues, match people to coffee shops, match people to restaurants. So similar type of technology can be used for matching people to jobs. And then that leads us to once we match the right person to the right job, driving them down the marketing funnel, adoption. And, and I, like I said before, in our case, adoption would be uh, a new candidate. 